In the last episode, we talked about how to take data and put it inside an empty array. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to take data from a database and insert it into an array so we can actually use it for later. Now, as you guys can see, I already have a couple of documents here with some stuff in it. So before we get started, I'd like to explain what exactly I did so far. Inside my index page, I have included a database connection at the very top. The database connection is right here inside my other page. And it's just a very basic connection to my localhost database, which is called test. Now inside my test database, as you guys can see, I have one table called data. And inside my data table, I have a couple of different rows of data. I just have a very basic ID for each data. And I also have some basic text. So right now, as you guys can see, each row has a, just one word. Hi there, friend. You seem like a cool person. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this data and put it inside an array. So I want to have an array that either spits out one row of data, or I want to have an array that spits out all the text data we have going on vertically. Now, if we go back inside my index page, you guys can see that inside my body tag, I also wrote some code. Now, all I did here was I ran a basic select statement. I queried it inside my database. And then afterwards, I created an empty array. Now, you don't actually have to create this empty array, but out of habit, I recommend you guys do it. Now, I chose to call this array datas, which is my way of writing data in plural, which I know is not correct. But just for the sake of this exercise, I call it datas. Now, underneath my empty array, I ran an if statement that said, OK, if we have more than zero results from this select statement, which means that if we have any kind of data running the select statement, then it should run this loop down here. Now, this is just a very basic while loop that says, OK, while we have results from the database, spit it out, or at least do something with it. So inside my while statement, I just did like we did in the last episode, where I inserted my data from the database, which right now, as you guys can see, are called dollar sign row is equal to the actual database results. I went ahead and took those results from dollar sign row and put it inside my data's array. So right now, our data's array is full of data results from the database. So how do we actually get this out inside our browser? Because right now, if I save it, go back to my browser, you guys can see we have nothing in here. Now, in order to get it out inside our browser, what we can do just to test what exactly is going on in here, we can do a print R function. So I say print underscore R parentheses, insert my data's variable inside of here without the brackets. We can actually see the array that we have going on here. Now. Right now, this can be a bit messy. But if you take it from one end and just kind of analyze what we have here, you guys can see we have an array, which is our data array. And inside the array, we have number zero, which is the first piece of data. And inside our zero, we have another array that has all our data from the database inside of it, which is right here. Now, you might be asking, why do we put all the result from our database into the first data of our array? Well, right now, when we take results from the database, which we do right here, when we say the while statement, and we actually print out all the data, it automatically gets seen as an array. So when we have an array from the database, we get from the database and insert it into another array, then we get an array inside an array. And this is what we call a multidimensional array. Now, in the next episode, we're going to talk more about multidimensional arrays. But just for the sake of this exercise, we're going to go ahead and just run with it. So basically, we have an array inside an array. Now, that's important because when we want to get this data, we need to make sure we go into the first piece of data from our original array and then spit out the result from that array. So as you guys can see right now, we have an ID that's equal to 1. We have uh, the next data in the first row, which is text that's equal to high. And then we have the next data in here where we have an ID and another piece of text. Okay. So if you go back to our code, we can go ahead and just comment out our print R because we don't need it right now. We're going to go down to the next line. And down here, we're going to go ahead and spit out, first of all, just the first row from our database. Now, the way we do that is by writing a for each statement. Now, for each statement, like we talked about before, is when we want to loop results from an array. If I can actually spell that correctly, there we go. Parentheses, curly brackets. Now, inside the parentheses, we need two pieces of data. We need to have the original array that we have up here called datas, and we need to have the new variable that we need to call on inside the loop. So inside the for each 
parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and say we have a variable called datas, which is our array that we have right now. And now we're going to go ahead and say as variable data, because we want one piece of data from our datas array. Now this data variable here, I just created, it's not anything that I created before. So this is something that we just created inside our for each loop. What it basically says is that each time we go inside our for each loop and call on data, for example, here, if I were to echo this out, then we're going to get the first result from the array. So right now, if I were to just do this, it's not going to work because as I just mentioned, we have the first array that has an array inside of it, inside the first data. So right now it doesn't know what this is. We need to actually call on the array that we have inside the first data, inside the first array. Now, again, multidimensional arrays, we're going to get to that in the next episode, but basically we don't want to loop out data from the array we have up here. We want to loop out from the data we have inside the first result from our datas. So if I were to go down inside our for each loop and say brackets after datas and say zero, we're now looping out the array we have inside the first result from our datas array. Again, I'm hoping I don't make this too confusing for you guys. So if we refresh, you guys can see it says one high, which if we go back inside our database is the first result we have from the first row inside our database. We have one as an ID and high as the text. Now, this is all good if you want to just loop out one row, but what if I want all the text pieces from all the different rows we have in here? What we can do then is we can go ahead and delete the brackets we have after datas and then I'm going to go ahead and go down inside my echo and after data, I'm going to say brackets and say that we want text, which is a string. So we need to have single quotes around it. And what it basically does is that it goes in and looks through this array and sees, okay, do we have any kind of columns from our database called text? Okay. It's going to go ahead and spit out every single data we have inside this column called text. So if I go ahead and save this, refresh my browser, you guys can see we get, hi there friend, you see, seem like a cool person, which is what we have inside our database. Again, I'm zooming out here, going downwards. So this is one way to write it out. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste it. So you guys can see both methods. So one is by removing this, we can say data s zero. And the other one is by running a for each loop and just calling on the text column. Okay. So depending if you want to get one row with all the data inside that single row, or if you want one column inside the database, we can do it both ways. If I go ahead and refresh the browser, you guys can see we now get both of them. We get one high, and then we start by getting the whole column. Now, if I want to have space in between here, we can just go ahead and go inside our loop down here and say after our variable data that has the column as text, we can go ahead and say punctuation, double quotes, space because now we have a space going afterwards. So if I were to refresh this, you can see it says, hi there friend, you seem like a cool person. Okay, so it's very basic. Now, some of you guys might be asking me, why do we need to take the data from the database and put it inside an array before we use it? At least in some examples, because essentially we just go up inside our database connection up here. And if we go ahead and just comment out what we have in here already, and underneath inside our while loop, I write echo, dollar sign row, brackets, and then I call in the column called text and go ahead and refresh my browser. You guys can see we get the same result up here. Now, the reason you might want to do it the other way is if you're using object oriented PHP programming, which is something else where you don't write the code directly where you need to use it like we did here. Right now I need to have all the database results right here. So I wrote the code here, but in object oriented programming, one of the benefits is that you write the code differently inside a separate document so that the users on the website doesn't see the database connection. So for security reasons, when you use object oriented programming, I use arrays in order to get the data from a database and pass it on to where I need to use it from a separate document. So passing the data to the next page is easier for me when I use arrays. So that's one example of why I would actually use it using arrays. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. In the next one, we're going to talk about multidimensional arrays. So you guys can make sense of what we actually did down here. And then you guys can go back if you feel like you want to go back and see what exactly was going on in here with this multidimensional array we had in here. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.